inshallah it's uh really going to be i would say um we call it in arabi we say disim you know it's a it's a very dense topic inshallah and we're talking about oppression um in islam or maybe i, I should have said um the you know oppression and injustice um in islam and what that means um, of course, we talked about last time the basis of immorality, and we said that the basis of mora immorality in Islam is really based on four different items. Number one is um, ignorance and arrogance, and the second was oppression, and the third was desires and anger. And we were going to be talking about each and every single one of these elements. So last week, or last two weeks, we talked about arrogance and ignorance. And this week, inshallah, we'll be talking about oppression. And the reason why we're talking about immorality is really because you cannot define morality if you don't really define immorality with it. It actually comes along with understanding the different uh, the different elements of what maintains justice. In order to define justice, you have to define injustice with it as well. And in because we had spent some while and some time speaking about morality and the different elements of morality, now it's really time since we're talking about morals in Islam that we would talk about what makes something as immoral in Islam or as an injustice. Um, speaking of that, inshallah, we'll be talking about, well, what is, number one, the definition of oppression or injustice. So there is... Uh, there is a very general, a uh, very general term in vulm or um, injustice in Islam, but of course it relates to a number of different topics. So generally, if you could see in the Quran that uh, transgression on the limit of Allah Almighty, so going beyond the limit that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had set is actually considered an injustice and which is what we would find in the ayat um, in where it, it speaks about injustice relating to aqidah or injustice relating to the connection with Allah Almighty or injustice even with Qawm Lut Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, called their action as zulm as well or the Qawm Lut and that that, that type of transgression um, is or was called um, a transgression or an injustice in the Quran. Of course there are different ethical theories or different theories in, in ethical and in philosophy of ethics on what makes uh, an injustice are we talking about um, proving that such an injustice happens to all the people or is it some kind of a divine command or is it what you might see as an injustice I might see it as justice and therefore we just accept that there is no specific definition to morality or injustice and that it's all a matter of perspective and it's all about how we feel towards a matter and this is of course the era that we're living in in that political correct uh, that politically correct and trying to to um, define it in uh, that way, um, and of course, there's uh, there are so many different philosophies. But I'm not just I'm not going to go all through um, all of these. But just to let you, you know, just be aware of those philosophies that are out there. And I think the most important one is how during our times that relativism that relativism is always I would say imposed on us in many ways. Um, but once you set one standard or you set or you try to define something um, as truth or you try to go back to a specific paradigm you will be considered and accused of somehow practicing a form of oppression and injustice even though to impose an idea such as relativism in itself is actually a form of oppression um, with you know by that definition of what it means to impose so just to let you know it's really important that we recognize what our our youth are really facing within uh, within campuses and today okay this is a secret all right just today I actually uh, so yesterday, let's say it that way, um, I was invited to, as a chaplain at St. Catherine University, I was invited to um, a program to support the LGBT. And right away I responded that I will not be joining. And today, 
I actually wrote a letter, a huge long letter, telling them why I cannot join and that it is actually in order to um, to clarify that in Islam, this is actually a form of an injustice and this is a going against uh, Allah Almighty. And if they wanted to lay me off, go ahead and lay me off and fire me. But it, it I think it's really important from the angle you wanted to support um, the LGBT. Well, I would like to say support the Muslim students that they have the right to actually speak their minds about what they think about this matter and that they actually feel that this is going against the Lord Almighty. So I actually thought my boss was going to say, you're fired. <laughs> but she said, are you ready to speak your mind regarding this? And I said, I'm ready. And she said, you do know that this is going to be a big issue at the university. I said, I'm ready. <laughs> so stay tuned. We'll see what happens. I'm also watching. I'm really ready for this. <laughs> um, SubhanAllah. It's, you know, I'm really ready. You know, I... I'm, I'm gonna khalas, that's it. It's gone beyond the, the limits. All right, so let's continue. Um, so speaking of um, the different ethical theories, of course, where in Islam, uh, when we talk about oppression, it's really important that you go back to the standards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's not based on how the moral, how the individuals feel regarding a definition of an injustice or oppression or justice but it's actually based on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of course it's not the people that define it's not ba because the people have their own biases and when we say their own biases that's definitely going to involve a lot of different influences on human beings political social the list goes on and on in affecting their perspectives on the matter so in Islam um, ethics, morality, injustice, or justice, it's really important to talk about that. It's not based on what you think. Oppression means this, but it's actually supposed to be based on not the majority's opinion and not the media, not the political lobbying, but it's actually supposed to be based on the Islamic resources. And it doesn't change by lobbying or culture because morality should always be morality principle should always be principle it does it does not change with time and it doesn't change according to people's people's pressures and during our day and age of course there's always this redefinition um redefinition of uh, as a way to manipulate the masses to redefine all the different things on what makes an injustice, what makes human rights, what makes women issues, what makes modesty, etc. And we are living in an era of, I would say, that 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 um, manipulation of definitions. Um, and a lot of the definitions are really based on that narrative and trying to use emotions in defining the uh, the different elements. And of course, when we're talking about those areas, I think it's really important that we go back to Islam in order to redefine, redefine based on the lens of Quran and Sunnah. And it's really sad that we're, I keep on saying this because it's really irritating me. It's really bugging me. It's really saddening me to see even the dua without naming so many names out there that are right now using things like we are supporting such and such and all these different things supporting what are you really saying that the process and I've actually supported this Allah um, there are general there are general key elements that we go back to in redefining and again it's my favorite acro um, acronym not an idiom but at my favorite acronym here not an idiom again chick chick take it off um, which basically is the DNAIM you all know about that know that about me and of course the legal maxims when we want to speak about oppression it actually goes again in the acronym the in the preservation of the Dean so if preservation the uh, preservation of the person's Dean um, is a form of justice then therefore an injustice would be a person going against the uh, against the uh, the spirituality and the Dean and similarly if preservation of life is actually the form of justice therefore an injustice would be any type of attack on a person's life that has the right of course to um, to live so this is and it's really important to mention generally 
um, in, I did actually mention it in the note speaking about the note that I had sent um, uh, the staff and the faculty, which I might get fired for it, but I have to say the truth. Enough is enough. All that, all that type of um, political correctness must be stopped and prepare. <laughs> Anyhow, so um, there's this dichotomy that is practiced that if you do not support them, therefore you mean to attack. Well, that's not necessarily the case because we don't support, uh, we don't support drinking, and we definitely don't support all the undressing immodestly um, out in public, and we definitely don't support gambling, and we definitely don't support all those different haram things. But we do, do we necessarily believe let's go and attack these people? Absolutely not. So ad advocacy and um, advocating for something or saying that, yes, we support, meaning they have the right to practice that, is actually against Islam. So when somebody is, you know, when we're looking at, for example, mind, will anybody say that they support the person's right to take drugs? Absolutely not, because it's considered as illegal, and that's why they will say it's illegal, and therefore it's not a right. So there we go. We go back to the re redefining the things around us. So mind and preservation of the mind and its education and of course, in, and that's why it's really important when we're talking about the indoctrination, the, the indoctrination that is happening right now in schools is actually a form of oppression when we're talking about indoctrination where it's bringing in the wrong information or it is inducing a type of, uh, and, and this is real you guys, this is real. Well, right now in schools, in schools they're actually um, putting in these ideas and I'm like never before I mean I went to American schools I I was in public schools like never before I mean just a couple years back when I was in sixth grade a couple years back wait a minute I'm 42 right now how many years is that anyhow so you do your your math and you do your calculation just a couple of years if anybody were to say and call somebody else a gay or or even hold hands I remember this very well there were two students I even remember their names Dwight Buckner and Jamal uh, forgot what his last name was um, they were in my sixth grade classroom right here in Willow Lane in Brooklyn Center one of them was just massaging the other one's back and it was really just you know they were sixth graders um, and they actually got a detention and even though um, they, he was just saying oh my back is so tired and he just started massaging his back and they got a detention you know think of and, and, look, just six years later, six years after that, so by the time I was in high school, in the study lounges, okay, in the study lounge, just six years later, in the study lounge, you had students speaking about what, how they are practicing their, their, you know, their illicit behavior. Just six years difference. Yes, six years difference in terms of age, but it's also you it's also with a lot of influence from the media in how it changed a lot of those uh, a lot of those behaviors and it really changed the way that one the legal system works and the educational system works and right now the educational system is nothing but an indoctrinating system and we gotta say it we it's really important if the dua are afraid to say the truth we're really in big trouble. We're really in big trouble. Allah Mustain. Anyhow, so the second part is preservation of chastity. So if preservation of chastity is actually justice, then therefore any type of a transgression on chastity, what we mean by chastity is not just a person's just a person's um, sexual organ, but this would actually involve a person's reputation, a person's um, uh, a purpose a purpose a person's uh, let's say private space and of course that would also include the preservation of family and where the person has the right uh, has the right to have a father a mother and if a person um, attacks or let's say if, if a person um, cheats on the father or cheats on the mother or whatever all right that would and let's say the child is born then the father and the mother 
all right, they had committed a transgression on the, the or oppression and oppressing the, the child's rights to actually have uh, a father and a, and a mother on top of their heads and instilling and making sure that they're getting their rights to the different needs. Um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them. So that would be that form of oppression. The final one is wealth. And it's really important that we would always consider and recognize that it's actually in this order. You could see that in the West, it's always talking about the money and then the right for sexuality. And of course, mind and education. And you, you could see it's totally going different, uh, differently in the West, but in Islam, it's actually going that way. Anyhow, so um, the other part is that when we're looking at, oops, where did it go? Uh-oh, we got lost. Okay, here we go. So in uh, the age that we're living in, of course, it's really based on a number of different things. So they're always, you know, based on John Locke, the consent, liberty, and property. Um, and of course, the different philosophies out there, we're not gonna go into them, but in Islam, when we're talking about universal maxim and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created within the laws, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created within nature, let's say it that way. And then the, the creation in the laws within nature are really to protect man's creation and existence and spirituality. So that's when we're speaking about create um, when we're speaking about protecting man's creation protecting man's existence and spirituality and that's what actually brings in justice therefore anything that attacks or anything that uh, that uh, I would say r um, may lead to the deconstruction or may lead to any harm or affect any of the different uh, uh, patterns that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in the world in all the different five elements that we said in the deen, the nafs, the aql, the ard, the mal, etc. Uh, the D and A I M that we mentioned before is actually a form of oppression. So well, let's look at the levels of injustice in Islam. All right. So in general, I want to look at this ayah, which I always love mentioning. It's my favorite ayah. I think I think I mentioned that one before. In Allah ya muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita idil qurba wa yanha an al fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Ya adukum la alakum tadakkarun. So in general, Allah subhanahu wa taala orders for justice, and if justice is not attained. All right, then you go for the second part, which is even a higher ranking type of type of a giving without waiting for something in response, where you give without waiting for something in return. So it's a, a different form of giving. This is uh, justice and adil is when there's something that equal shares, you're giving and taking. Um, but al ihsan is a higher level where you're not waiting for somebody to give you back, but you're actually giving without waiting for something in return. Same thing with ita idul qurba, the word ita, we mentioned it before, in where you are giving without waiting for something in return, and those are for the relatives. At the same time, the Lord Almighty forbids that one would commit any form of um, an, uh, an aggression, any form of transgression, and any form of oppression. And the difference, um, although I use the English terms um, differently, but al-fahshat usually involves more of oral type of transgression, oral type of, we're talking about, you know, oral type of abuse. Um, Il-munkar many times involves um, any type of a physical, and il baghi may involve more than just physical and oral. It can involve things like financial abuse and, of course, the mental abuse, all those different things. And the Lord Almighty forbids on all types of abuse. And in the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even on himself, he actually said, that the Lord Almighty does not want to oppress people. In other words, that the whole thing about Sharia, that the whole concept, that the whole purpose of Sharia was really in order to maintain stability, to maintain uh, to maintain justice. That's the whole idea of Sharia, whether and even the whole idea and the purpose of creation. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa aqsitu in muqsitin and maintain justice for the Lord Almighty loves the, those that are acting justly. And the pro, uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu la yuhibbu zalimin. And the Lord Almighty dislikes the oppressors. And he even said, Innahu la yuflihu zalimun. Uh, those that 
that are oppressing others are surely not to succeed. There won't be succeeding. And that's why the Lord Almighty had um, um, uh, assured that فَوَيْرُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمٍ أَلِيمٍ And for those that have oppressed, the Lord Almighty had guaranteed that they will actually be punished for the different oppression that they had committed. Because when we're looking at oppression, we're definitely looking at a form of deconstructing the whole world, not just deconstructing one side of it, but is actually deconstructing the main purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this world in. Now, what are the different levels of injustice, speaking about injustice? The shirk is actually on top of the injustices, and which was why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna shirka la dhulmun azim. In fact, when the Prophet ﷺ named out the seven major sins, <clears throat> when <clears throat> He named out the seven major sins. He actually named the major sins. If you even if you even look at the hadith, I, I wish that I had actually included it here. Um, if you look at the hadith, the first thing, um, the first thing that the Prophet ﷺ had actually mentioned was actually shirk, and then he went for qatl nafs, and then he went for qatl nafs and killing, um, killing, um, killing others. Of course. Now you know what? Maybe I could even share the screen so. Um, because I couldn't. Let's actually share the screen. So here are the, the different levels of um, the Sab'a al mubiqat They're called the Sab'a al mubiqat which basically is talking about the seven major transgressions that, or seven major oppressions and injustices that you could actually commit. Number one is shirku billah. It's um, associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the question is, why is associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even that much of an issue? So here's the thing. It's really important to um, just keep in mind that when during our times, why doesn't why doesn't necessarily you know the West right now or the common uh, the common thought that is surrounding us actually see that going against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, many times with universalism, they'll tell you, well, I'm so good to, I'm, I don't attack people, I'm good with people, so therefore God is going to reward me, and therefore I... I should be regarded as okay and should be regarded as good because I'm good to people. But in Islam, the issue is not just good to people. That's a secondary thing. But the primary uh, justice is actually to act good. In other words, to worship the Lord Almighty. So why do Muslims actually start from there and not just regard, hey, if you're good to people, you're not attacking people, you should be good. So the number one reason is really because all the different things that you have around you, all the, 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 the different things that made life are really from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to disregard to disregard all the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given you and to only just regard as, well, um, I'm just looking around me and dealing, you know, with people around me. So looking at the triangle and only seeing the base of it and not really seeing the, the different sides of it and not really seeing what makes the triangle, which is that upper angle is extremely important to uh, to you know <laughs> reconsider because when you talk about just the base and you say well I'm you know I'm I'm standing on the base right there and everything is fine well you forgot that there is that that uh, most important base that made this world is really not the base of the triangle but is actually Allah almighty Allah Almighty, He is the creator of the world, and since He is the one that created you and brought this world to to the existence, and even founded this world before your your existence and before even the people's existence, then therefore He is actually the first to recognize before even recognizing the people around you. He's the first to recognize and the first to recognize all the bounties that um, that you were given. So here, a shirku billah acts as on top on top of the deviances and this is really important because when we're talking about any form of understanding around the world you know when you talk about for example philosophy of ethics you if the person doesn't understand the philosophy of ethics for example and they're just talking about this is human rights and that's human rights and they don't understand where 
the definition of human rights is actually coming from and which philosophies are defining those human rights, that person is indoctrinated. If that person doesn't realize how feminism is right now affecting, for example, uh, the definition of women's rights and human rights and all those in the so-called human rights, I'll say it that way, and doesn't realize where where that, that um, I would say, ideology, it is really an ideology. It's uh, it, where it's coming from, where that philosophy is coming from, who the philosophers are that made such definitions and regarded that, hey, this is what it means to um, to practice justice and this is what child rights means and this is what human rights means and etc. Well, that's a thing, is that if they don't recognize where those thoughts are coming from, that means they're actually really indoctrinated to see certain ideas without them realizing they're actually they're actually being told to see in that way. So in Islam is that shirk billah by looking at a different angle. When we're looking at shirk billah, we're actually talking about a number of different angles. Whether shirk billah means you believe in other than Allah Almighty as the creator of the world, as the one to cherish you, all these different things about Allah Almighty and the names of Allah Almighty, or whether that person was worshiping other than Allah Almighty. And the third most dangerous one is to believe that anyone can, again, pay attention to this one, can regulate slash legislate over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's legislature. All right, over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's legislature. That is shirk and kufr as well. So when we speak about shirk billah, you're actually recognizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the center of the, the creation, is the center of the world. He's the, the center of your understanding and the way you define right and wrong and you define legislature and you define the things around you. And of course, um, that the Lord Almighty, since he's the center to legislate and the center to create and the center to be worshipped on ritual and even to be worshipped in actions, etc., then that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the center, as the center of um, of justice. All right. So that's why when we look at um, it, committing an injustice, we're actually talking about that type of transgression in where it starts with a person's vision of the world has actually gone outside the center. It's really a lost prantala. A sihr, and uh, sihr is really magic. And when we're talking about magic, we're not talking about the t the type of magic. Now you see it, now you don't. You know, you got the <laughs> you got a a coin in your hand, and you put it in your sleeves, and it's like I committed magic. And uh, no, it's, it's it's that's not the sihr that we're talking about. The sihr that we're talking about next week inshallah stay tuned we're actually going to be talking about on on friday inshallah in the tafsir class it's a whole class going to be about magic spooky stay tuned and of course we go back to right there and we're killing somebody and when we're talking about killing somebody remember dna i m so sihr is a form is a form of manipulation all right, a form of manipulation. Qatlunas. Now we go back to D N A I M. So why is sihr right after shirk? Because the second that a person believes in the powers, in the powers of other than Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that person had actually committed a form of shirk. All right. So the second one is preservation. The nest to remember. So attacking and transgressing the limits on somebody's life is going to be the second major injustice so the second major injustice and of course oppression all right and um using and going for interest in usury is the third one and taking of course the wealth of uh the, the wealth of the orphans and the needy because to them it actually is meaning not only just 
um, food, uh, but it is actually meaning their own life. At-tawalli yawm al-zahf, it's basically speaking about um, departing the army when the arm when the army had actually been right in the heated spot of that attack. وَقَثْفِ muhsanat And قَثْفِ muhsanat is basically speaking about um, ruining the reputation of the women, uh, the Muslim women that are actually uh, bashful women. And of course, this is attacking a person's ard, a person's chastity. And going back to, let's go back to the slide that we were working on. All right. So the second form of um, second form of abuse or injustice is abusing the parents. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa qada Rabbuka alla ta'budu illa iya wa bil walidaini ihsana." That the Lord Almighty had decreed that we would only worship Allah Almighty and to act and deal justly and kindly with parents. And the Prophet, uh, then, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually says, وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حُسْنَا That Allah Almighty had decreed that man would deal with both of his parents in good terms. And even if they would fight him to associate partners with Allah Almighty, with what the he uh, does not know of, then do not answer them and do not obey them in such but at the end, the ayah continues. I didn't quote it here. Um, the, another ayah continues and actually says, Allah Almighty, Allah Almighty actually says, so what does it mean to actually not abuse the parents? So abusing the parents, if the person is capable of buying the necessary elements for their parents, then therefore they are obligated to do so. Whoever is capable of... Um, of paying or spending on those that he is responsible for, then they must spend based on their capacity and their ability, their financial capacity. And of course, there's a difference between when we're talking about mother and father. And that's a really simple and a fast hadith that everyone knows. When the man came to the Prophet and said, who's the most one that deserves my respect slash favoritism, if you'd want to say. And the Prophet said, your mother. And he said, then who? Your mother. And then he said, then who? And he said, your mother three times. And then finally said, your father. So what does it, what does really respecting or disrespecting uh, parents really mean? Um, so number one is kind words. And I want to read this ayah. So the ayah says, وَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُف And do not say uf to them. Now, the word uf is really not a word. The word uf is more of a description. Um, so it's more of uh, a body language, if you'd want to say, where a person is um, probably angry at their parents and they're just giving a breath. They're really, they didn't really say any word. All right. So the ayah said, not even a breath, not even that breath in where it reflects the your anger or your anxiety from your parents is permissive, is permissible. And the ayah continues, وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Well, if uf is not allowed, where similarly, وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا And do not, even, of course, when they go wrong, even if they might actually um, ask a lot of things from you and they might trans, uh, 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 let's say, uh, transgress sometimes in recognizing your ability or you're probably busy at that moment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Don't speak to them in a loud voice or speak to them in a voice of condescending. And say good and kind words to them. And even when it comes to behavior, make sure that the word is actually here a metaphor the metaphor. I'm gonna say the literal word and then speak, speak, uh, and, and then speak about the metaphor and what it really means. Well, so وَخْفَضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ. It's kind of like you lower the wing of of humility um, with mercy. All right. So, but really, that's a metaphor which actually means it's kind of like you are. 
um, you know, they were at one point like those birds that are trying to keep you inside and tuck you inside their wings. So now that they have gone older, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, now it's your turn to tuck them under the wings of humility and mercy. So now it's switch around because your parents have gone older now. And it's, you know, it's, uh, it's really strange how when we get older we do actually get colder our bodies start producing i guess less uh you we start getting colder and there are so many different reasons you know medically as to why we're starting to get colder and um in we want more and more warm clothes and we definitely need that warmth not only in the clothes but definitely need the warmth even in the mercy and definitely we the, the older you get the more um uh, the more you start losing your temper and that's the same thing in where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is aware that when you get older you start losing your temper so the ayah says what waqfad lahuma janaha just take that moment to show respect take that moment to show humility uh, because they're feeling that they had lost all their pride already so don't show them and don't reflect that you have gone stronger and they have gone weaker. And that's why that A says, lahuma At one point they were stronger. Your dad was definitely stronger and he was, and you were weaker. And right now your dad got, they got weaker and you got stronger and he can't scold you the way that he scold, used to scold you and force you to do things like before. So just maintain that respect and just put it in perspective and just see how does it really rub on their psychology? How does it really rub on how they feel about themselves? It's, um, it, it, you know, just to think of it, um, just to think of it, especially now, I guess, getting older, uh, it just... Uh, you know, my, my daughter is taller than me, mashallah. So to recognize, you know, yeah, I'm usually, you know, I'm not that short, but to uh, see right now my daughter getting way taller than me, it kind of feels like, wait a minute, what, did I miss something? What happened? She was way shorter than that. Um, so you speak in kind words, even if they actually had put in some type of force to force you to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even if they do such, well, don't obey them in that regards, but always maintain that relationship, that relationship in this dunya in where it's on good terms. So maintaining on good terms. What does it mean to maintain on good terms? Maintaining on good terms um, in maintaining the good terms of respect the good terms of saying good and kind words uh, maintaining a good body language that's the good terms right there and follow those that are obedient to the lord almighty and in the end you know even if when we're talking about parents and when we're talking about relatives you know always consider that there is the center uh, that you want to follow which is who's obedient to the lord almighty and of course, the Prophet, peace be upon him, when we're looking at speaking in regards of kind words, it's really important to mention that the Prophet, peace be upon him, actually said, from the major sins is a man uh, abusing his father and mother in language. Of course, we're talking about the here abusing language, speaking in foul language and stuff. And they, that when the Prophet was asked, so would a person actually swear or use foul language against their parents you know it's it's really it's it's really strange how the world actually turned right now and the prophet said yes look at this let's listen to this and he said a man would swear or in other words use a foul language on somebody else's father and um and then or even their mother, and then the per the other person might actually respond in return to abuse the person's father. So did the person really mean and intend 
to swear at his own father or speak in foul language against his own father? Absolutely not. But the Prophet ﷺ said, even if that is going to bring somebody swearing or using foul language against your father or your mother, don't even do that, even if you were going to use it against somebody else's parents, because you don't want that type of uh, that type of verbal abuse to go against your parents. And the other part is making dua. وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُ مَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a direct order right here, a direct order to invoke the Lord Almighty and, and ask Allah Almighty that He would shed His mercy on them and recognize that that moment in where when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to do the dua, it becomes it becomes a word that you yourself want to repeat in order to recognize. You yourself, you want to repeat to live that inspiration. You yourself want to live that in where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا Just as um, you make that dua, just as they had... They had disciplined me just as they had raised me. They had taken care of me uh, when I was young. And what that is reflecting is really the amount of the amount of uh, hardship that the parents would put in in raising their children. And of course, spending on the parents when they need. Now, the the other part, balance of injustice, of course, when you're looking at the balance of injustice, I wanted to go back to it really fast again. Um, so when we're looking at the balance of injustice, we just talked about the parents and of course, shirk. We talked about the shirk. We talked about the uh, taking care of the parents. The second part, which is nafs and killing oneself or another. So when we're looking at killing oneself, that's a form of oppression where uh, where where uh, the Prophet Sallam had actually said that if a person were to commit suicide, that whatever method or tool they had used in order to commit that suicide, it will be used the same method and it will be used that same tool um, on Judgment Day and they will be the ones to induce it on themselves just like they had induced it the first time. So if somebody thinks that they are rest in in peace um, by committing suicide well think again it's never it's going to be a continuous pain forever and ever and the other part which is uh, mind so an injustice against the mind is really in drinking doing drugs and you know you you continue with the lines right there chastity and doing an injustice against a person's chastity whether in sodomy you know um do, Sodomy or gayism and lesbianism is actually worse than zina, by the way. Uh, it is on, on the scale of sin. Uh, gayism, that is men and men relations, is actually worse than zina. All right? It's worse than zina. Zina is worse than lesbianism. All right? Zina is worse than lesbianism. And, of course... Gayism is on uh, the the top of all that. Uh, it's actually considered way worse than zina uh, because of how it involves a transgression on on uh, a transgression on all ends on all ends within the society. And right now, of course, Allah uh, al-Musta'in, it's going everywhere. Um, the other part, which is transgression in wealth, injustice and wealth and property. So abusing, abusing others' wealth or uh, others' wealth without permission, taking whether in stealing or whether in um, money laundering, whatever you may call it, all the different methods of taking somebody else's property is actually considered a form of oppression. Abusing one's wealth by misusing it. Can you abuse your, yourself? Yes, you can abuse yourself. And that's why when we're looking at abusing one's wealth, when person's gambling, for example, person is m not considering, I want you to look at this one. So not spending in the areas that are required. So this is a really important topic, this on its own is actually, is actually um, a whole legal maxim, by the way. Because الضرورات, we're talking about necessities. So you're spending on necessities. What makes necessities? Are, is it really, again, the D-N-A-I-M? 
the second part, which is al-hajiyat, all the different elements that your life would really be extremely hard without it. So a car, for example, a car, refrigerator, a stove, all right, and tahsiniyat, um, so darurat, would the necessity, you need water, all right, you need um, probably, well, you need gas, definitely, for warmth, so those are going to be darurat, those are going to be the necessities. Hajiyat are things your life would be really hard without, and you need it, like we mentioned, like a stove, um, a car, even though you can definitely, you can definitely probably use a bus, but that's that's also adding on to now tasiniyat and these things indeed do change based on based on um based on time and the circumstances that we're living in so tasiniyat would probably be hey it'd be good to have a computer and probably get, be good to have a, two extra large screens like the screens that I have in front of me and it would probably be good to have an incliner so here's a tasiniyat right there um yeah not just the couch but an incliner with it and yeah, I don't need just a table or a table. I also need coffee tables. So here, tasiniyat. All right. So those are just different things. But of course, I'm not saying that this is misusing the wells. But I think it's, uh, you know, it's re really worthy of mention to probably make a, just a whole lecture on that. And it does actually change from one person to another. So who and what define just defines ju injustice? So the general uh, the general concept is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created the world, therefore he has the right to define the limitations of things and how they function, and that is from the heavens to the smallest matter. I want you I wanted to quote this ayah Ar Rahman, the Lord Almighty, the most merciful. He taught the Quran, he created man, he taught man intellect, in other words, gave him the ability to uh, to process ideas, to speak, to uh, to articulate and the sun and the moon are in full rotation in complete rotation in Najm in Najm is, is not actually they're not the stars in Najm are actually the plants that grow that grow how do you, what, what do you say that I'm using my hand it's like yeah <laughs> as if you guys can see me so the the plants that grow on on the ground kind of like cucumbers um, what else cucumbers grows on ground um watermelon grows on ground okay so those are the those are the najm shajar are basically the plants that grow creepers there you go so the the shajar are basically the plants that grow upwards so um pomegranate trees um peaches peach trees oranges apple trees all right so those are and they're actually doing sujood and then it continues and he had risen the skies and he had set and he had set al mizan al mizan means the balance all right i want you to look at this one because there's an excellent there's just this beautiful this beautiful um part about this ayah all right because it takes you into recognizing that the foundation to knowing ethics to knowing truth actually comes with wahi well that's the foundation to recognizing where and how we define how we define the world remember we talked about we we talked about before the different resources for epistemology and we said they're either going to be the vun which basically are speculations or they're going to be based on the political pressure and slash the different lobbying and of course the different hawa the different desires that one has and the third one was al wahi remember that that ayah we talked about so that combined all the different the different um epistemology and the resources so the ayah here starts well well defining and speaking about um ethics and speaking about what makes ilmizan what makes justice what makes the foundation to knowing justice it says well he taught you the quran start from there now go back to the foundation of your creation well you were created he created you and he taught you that articulation the description of things your, your intellect was actually part of the dimension and the other thing well you are one piece as a human being you are just one piece within this whole world within this whole galaxy within this whole creation well there's an order 
the order is not just in you as a creature you're just part of the system ashams the sun the moon are going into a specific pattern and system in other words from the sun to the moon they're going into a pattern from the tree to the uh, creepers to the trees they're also submitting to their lord almighty in prostration to the skies and all the things that were going to be going underneath it follow one rule in where it is a rule where the lord almighty had set a pattern to it set a certain paradigm set justice set a certain a certain limit to it alla tatghaw fil mizan so do not exceed the level do not go beyond the pattern that the lord almighty had set and make sure you live the the very limits of it make sure that you stand up to the principle of the wazan of the the limits that the lord almighty had set in practicing justice wala tukhsirul mizan and do not do not cause any imbalance on the the justices and on the limits that the lord almighty had created the earth is for you to dwell in you've got all the different things the different things that you need on this light on this world in this world in this life on earth to dwell and to continue your existence for survival you've got the fruits you've got the plants you've got all those different th- those different things but you need to recognize one very important thing which is the lord almighty created everything in pattern and therefore your behavior as well should also be following this pattern well speaking about a behavior we talked about the different things of shirk and we talked about parents now it's time to talk about the siblings and the relatives now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in allah amru bil adli wal ihsan we talked about this ayah this is my favorite ayah so if somebody tell, tells you what my favorite ayah is this is my favorite ayah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, here actually mentions speaking about the siblings and the relatives ma min dhanb ajdaru an yu'jala yu'jila allah yu'jila yu'jila allah li sahibihi al'uquba yu'jil sorry you guys li sahibihi al'uquba fi dunya ma ma yadkhilu lahu fi al-akhirah min al-baghi wa qati'at al-rahm in other words there's there's no um there's no other sin where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will anticipate the punishment for them in this dunya even though he had kept for them a lot of punishment in the akhira more than oppression and ostracizing and leaving rahim what is a rahim a rahim are really the relatives and the female relatives um that are considered as mahram so your sisters your mother your uh your uh, aunts etc all those are going to be considered as part of a rahm so in other words allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will actually for those that again that abuse their siblings and abuse their female relatives allah almighty will actually let them get the punishment in the dunya before even getting to the akhirah <coughs> there's really a lot to say about um ab- about relatives um uh, but inshallah we'll we'll make that into a whole separate lecture um oppressing others and beating them is also a form of a form of a uh, of oppression in where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet said him actually said inna inna allaha yu'adhibu alladhina yu'adhibuna an-nasa fi dunya allah almighty will punish and will torture those that torture people in this dunya but of course it's really important to un, un, uh, keep in mind that torture is not exclusive to physical abuse but includes all forms of abuse whether in abusing somebody in their life or mental abuse sexual abuse financial abuse all that is actually a form of abuse and of course on the top of all the different abuses manipulation is the most dangerous form of abuse And that's why Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about Fir'aun as the icon of oppression. The icon of oppression 
um, Fir'aun really started his oppression with manipulation. And the, and the ayat would tell us the details about how the, the, the center of that manipulation that Fir'aun had started out with had actually led to, to killing the children, to um, keeping the women alive and abusing them and raping them and using them um, in different in different labors. And of course, speaking about those different areas, but in, in the end is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us and all the different things, uh, how Fir'aun started with his uh, with his uh, slogan, "Ma urikum illa ma ara, wa ma ahdikum illa sabila rashad." I only show you um, what I am here trying to, um, in other words, guide you to see in the right thing. And I'm here, not going to be forcing you into, into something you don't want. I'm here, just aiming to bring about guidance. And what did it really result in? The manipulation resulted in all the different forms of injustice that was committed against the children, the older and the mothers and the fathers, slaving Bani Israel and so forth. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this ayah, فَبَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا قَوْلًا غَيْرَ الَّذِي قِيلَ لَهُمْ فَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا رِجْزًا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ بِمَا كَانَ يَفْسِقُونَ in the end, oppression and transgressing the limits of the Lord Almighty. Notice here, فَبَدَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا قَوْلًا غَيْرَ الَّذِي قِيلَ لَهُمْ Those that had committed an oppression, what was the oppression that they, be, they, they began with? The oppression that they started out with was really changing the words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because they had manipulated the masses and they changed the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had actually sent a rijzam min as sama A rijzam min as sama it can can mean any type of any type of a punishment, um, which today they would call it a natural disaster, but it is really a natural disaster from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bima kanu yafsiqun. Why did they actually get this this disaster from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which people would say natural disaster? Well, really because bima kanu yafsiqun. Because of the transgression that they had committed against the foundation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created people in. In other words, they had committed a transgression against the fitrah. They had committed a transgression against the justices and the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created. And of course, supporting manipulation is an injustice, an injustice itself. Ibn Taymiyyah says a very beautiful thing. He said, قَالَ غَيْرُ وَاحِدٍ مِنَ السَّلَفِ أَعْوَانُ الظَّلَمَةِ مَنْ أَعَانَهُمْ وَلَوْ أَنَّهُ لَاقَ لَهُمْ دُوَاتًا أَوْ بَرَى لَهُمْ قَلَمًا He said, those that are supporting the oppressors, whether they were supporting them in bringing the utensils and, and of course, sharpening their utensils to write, to write with, or whether they were giving them the ink to write with, let alone the microphone to speak through. Allahul Musta'in. Injustice, of course, leads to chaos in the end, and which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says right there that in the end is that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the injustices that Fir'aun had committed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had actually um, uh, had actually punished those and those that were supporting them. Why? Because not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oppressed them, but they actually walked the path of oppression and the path of oppression leads to different chaos and will definitely bleed to their own to their own um, chaos in the end they will be the ones to have actually brought all this chaos and all this destruction to themselves why doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala end oppression by punishing the oppressors right away Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says all right وَلَوْ يُؤَاخِذُ اللَّهُ النَّاسَ بِظُلْمِهِمْ مَا تَرَكَ عَلَيْهَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ وَلَاكِنْ يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ Allah Almighty says, if he would have wanted to, to hold people accountable with all the transgression that they were committed, committing, that he would not have left anyone on the face of earth, that, that is. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delays them to a certain appointed time to a certain appointed time. So what does that really mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives mercy, in other words, 
delays the people to give them because of his mercy. He actually delays them to give them the chance to repent. And it's also a nobility for those that want to stand in correcting wronghood. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, um, in the end tells us when these those nations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had destructed when they had committed the transgression and there then there was for their destruction an appointed day and in the end the Lord Almighty says we're just giving them the time, giving them that time in order for them, of course, to uh, giving them the time to repent. But this is li'as dadu ithma. It doesn't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to increase in the oppression. But they actually thought that here we're taking more time, I guess, according to them. This is actually a sign that God is accepting and God is content over what we do. So am I responsible for the oppression that surrounds me? So here's the thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِّن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ For every single oppression that you go through, you actually were the one to hold responsibility. Wait a minute. So when somebody's oppressing me, I hold responsibility? Not too fast. Question, the answer is not complete. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You have to uplift the oppression around you, that surround you, whatever power that you have, in whatever capacity that you have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that your situation the situation whether you were a victim or whether you are seeing the oppression and the injustice around you, it really starts with changing the idea from within. How do you see yourself? How do you see oppression? How you, how you define the things that surround you? This is the start. It starts with correcting on the inside. Once you correct it on the inside, then that will traject in different ways of how you're going to create the new atmosphere, the new, uh, the new situations, the new circumstances to changing the injustice that surrounds that surrounds us. And of course, in the end, if you weren't capable of changing the injustice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He just delays those people for a day when people will be in complete stare during because of fear. Now, here's the thing, is that you still have to do your form of, uh, let's, let, let's say, your form and your responsibility of change in order, in, order to, uh, in order to bring about the circumstances to make a difference and change the situation. And which is why you could see in this ayah, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ أَنْجَيْنَا الَّذِينَ يَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ السُّوءِ so even if you are seen, everyone's following a certain direction, you be the pioneer to speak up the truth even when everyone else is becoming weak or afraid to say the truth. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when they had forgotten what they were reminded of, in other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words and the principles and the sharia that he had sent. The only ones that were saved were the ones that were pre preventing and ordering others and giving the others the reminder that they should not do falsehood. How do I relate to oppression? So, well, there are a number of different things. Oh, the Prophet Sallam, you could see this hadith from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. He actually said that the, he heard the Prophet Sallam say, whoever sees any wrongdoing, then they should change it with their hand. If they cannot, then with their tongue. If they cannot, then with their hearts. And that is the least of their least of faith. So what does that really mean? When we're looking at changing with yad, yeah, that actually means changing with power. If you had the power to speak up, to change, to enforce and implement the law, then do so. If you don't have the power to do so, 
then speak about it, inform, educate about it with your tongue. Tongue includes with your writing, writing and of course videos, etc. And that is by making the change. It's so sad now we're right now seeing dua that are saying, let's not use convincing. And that's a failed method. La ilaha illallah. A failed method. Wasn't that what the prophets were doing? Now we're seeing dua telling us don't even try using that method. Ashhadu bi anna Muhammadan nabi. La ilaha illallah. All right, the final thing is if you can't do it, then well, you're afraid to do it, then at least do it with your hearts. Now, when we're looking at people's rights in general, the Prophet ﷺ actually said, And this is really important that when we're talking about justice, Allah, the Prophet ﷺ, not Allah, but the Prophet ﷺ actually said that giving people the rights, um, you have to do it in this dunya, but in the akhirah, if it's not done, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not only make people and force people to give other people their rights, but he'll even force even the, the the sheep, the sheep that don't have horns to actually get their rights from the ones that have horns. So what does it mean to give people their rights? Well, you want to keep remember that a person's life, when we say demuhu, demuhu, this is a hadith, demuhu actually means a person's life. Remember D-N-A-I-M. So here we go. The person's life is sacred. A person's reputation and sexuality and chastity and family is sacred and the person's wealth is sacred and therefore attacking on either any of those dna i am the deen the nas the ard the mal the aql the ard the mal is actually a form of oppression what about if the the law actually protected my uh, my claim of right. Well, the Prophet ﷺ actually said that you come to me and and some of you might be more eloquent than others in defending and advocating for their rights probably more than the other person that is on the other side. فأقضي له على نحو ما أسمع. And I might rule for him based on what what I was hearing. فمن قطعت له قطعت له من حق أخيه شيئا فإنما أقطع له قطعة من النار. Whoever I ruled for from his brother's rights, then as if I had just taken a piece of hellfire and had given it to him. This hadith is actually muttafaqun alayh, which means it's authentic, the highest level of authenticity. Now, there's really a lot to say, but I hope I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't too, um, too much in in details, or I didn't. Of course, there's gonna, there are definitely going to be some repeated items, um, but uh, inshallah, hopefully, it will still be okay to do. Uh, so, if there are any questions, or if somebody wants to comment on anything, go ahead. Everybody is bored, or did they fall asleep? I think they all fell asleep. I was too boring. Uh oh. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to be too boring. Let's just wait. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Let's just wait. I'm still waiting for. Um, I'm still waiting and excited to see what the. Uh, the faculty and the staff are going to respond to my letter. So let's just see and wait. Stay tuned. I'll probably put it on the chat for the Gems of Light chat. Haq is haq, you guys. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this world in justice. We can't speak of um, speak of justice if we don't know and we don't stand up um, to justice. We have to stand up to it by first educating others about it. If we ourselves are too afraid to speak it, then, then the pioneers have failed us. Allahul Musta'in. All right. Well, Jazakumullah Khairan, everyone. Doesn't look like anybody wants to say anything. So somebody's telling us they they weren't bored. Uh, they enjoyed it. I hope that's really the the feeling of the rest of the the group. So Jazakumullah Khairan, everyone, and Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. وإياكم ربي يحفظكم جميعاً